customized everything in Pokemon Scarlet, and things got a little bit weird. Very interesting transformation. Yeah, I don't know if this game was ready for a randomizer yet. More on that later. First, allow me to introduce you to our hero, Randy. Look at her, isn't she just so random? Anyway, we wobble downstairs, meet our mom and the director of our school who shows us our starter choices. Boring. Then we begin to make our way down to our neighbor's house. Oh my god! Ha <laughs> <laughs> yes! Let the jank begin! We try our best to forget about the gigantic space dragon flying into the ground next to our house as we move on, meet our rival Nimona, and choose our starter. While these three may look like their normal selves, if I set this thing up correctly, they should be different. Tondoso. <laughs> it's a flying, I forgot that the dice are random. We continue down to the beach where our first battle awaits. But first we let Dondozo out of its ball for a bit. Oh, the go-go looking real different. I like how they just, they just decided, you know what, fish Pokemon can fly now. Fully bonded with our big fish, we face off against Nimona in our first battle. What? The game is fully not ready for a big Pokemon to be in this fight. <laughs> Oh, she's, she does have six. Oh, no. Ow. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't know how we're expected to win that. Oh, I also set up the randomizer so that every trainer has six Pokemon with perfect stats. So... Yeah. You may not know this because there's no reason why you should ever lose this first battle, but you don't actually have to win in order to move on. Yes, folks, this is modern Pokemon. We continue on and catch a disappointingly unrandom Lechonk in our catching tutorial, then we finally get to the good part. <laughs> Before I show you what made me make this face right here, I want to quickly ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel because it doesn't cost you a thing and it helps me out a ton. My New Year's resolution for 2023 is to reach 500,000 subscribers on this channel and Google will won't let me make any more YouTube accounts. So I need you to help your boy out and subscribe. Thanks. Where were we? Uh, oh yeah, the good part. Okay, we have some some beached Magikarp. Arceus is just stuck in a tree. You get in this ball right this instant, Greninja. Oh, 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 first ball? <laughs> what? Oh, it has so many good moves. Maridon? Before we even encounter- Oh my- Imagine if we catch this thing now. We got him! Magnet. Why? After a surprisingly fruitful catching extravaganza, we head down this cliff to save Magnet's brother, Karidon, from a few puppies. Then we slowly work our way through this cave. <laughs> Hi, bud. It's only level two. Okay. We can try for it. Get in the ball. Oh, what? We got, wait, what? How did we catch it? Yeah, the Pokeballs were hitting different in this run. Eventually, we're able to link back up with the Mona on the other side of the cave and meet our second friend, Arvin. Oh. We're so slighted. He also has six Pokemon, but between our first battle and this one, we somehow managed to catch two legendaries and a Greninja, so you could say the odds are a little bit more in our favor. We take out his lead Espeon, then he sends in his Palafin. It's in hero form? What? What? <laughs> okay, super effective, nice. Don't have to worry about that big boy. Back Scalibur. Why is his team so strong? It doesn't even have an attack animation. <laughs> We take out the rest of his team without too much issue until he brings in his final Pokemon, Tankaton. Oh, he's terrestrializing? Bug type. How not frightening. Oh yeah, in addition to having six Pokemon with perfect stats, every trainer also terrestrializes in every battle. Fun. Thankfully, Arvin's bug type, Tinkaton, isn't too much of a threat, so we easily clean it up, get Coridon's Pokeball, and move on with our life. We start to make our way to school, but before we can make any progress, we notice something strange. Who is that in there? Who is that? <laughs> oh, it's a Satoddle. Oh, you don't want to come out and fight? I feel like I can't even take 10 steps in this randomizer without something hilarious happening. I mean, look at who we found just a few seconds after we left the lighthouse. Okay, fine. We'll catch the chestnut. Bug rock. And here I was thinking that chestnut's typing couldn't get any worse than it already was. Oh, and also, too bad I don't have any Pokeballs. 
But unfortunately, our sweet bird buddy was eaten by a tutorial cutscene. Please still be there. Ah, oh, we lost the Galarian Moltres. Or Zapdos, why can't I get that right? Not to worry though, because there are plenty more crazy Pokemon to be found in the final stretch before we get to Mesagoza. Those things are what? Enamorous? What? <laughs> Which one do I go for? Which one do I go for? Enamorous. Oh, we killed it. I didn't realize the ancient Volcarona was so huge. God, why is everything <laughs> dying? With our team halfway full of legendaries, we head up to the gates of the city where we face off against Nimona for a second time. This time, we decide to give Chester the Chestnut a chance to shine and start setting up with random stat boosts from Acupressure. We get our stats all boosted up, then... What? Uh, okay, looks like we set up a little too close to the sun. Once we stop messing around, we're able to use Greninja and Maridon to slice through the rest of Nimona's team until she sends in her ace. That's a crazy ace for her to have. Terra Dark. Comeuppance? What is that? Wait, no. Ah, it's gonna do so much damage. No. <laughs> what? It would have comeuppance. Dige. Oh, crit. Oh, such clutch criticals with those dragon darts. After winning that battle, we can finally head into... Mesa Goza. Oh, forgot about this fight. Being completely unprepared for this battle, we lead with our Enamorous, who has zero attacking moves. Oh, what? We have no attacks, but our opponent also has no attacks. We swap out of there, then Pyroball and Swift our way through this Grunt's team. Finally, we find ourselves with Chestnut staring down a very menacing Iggly buff. Wait, what's happening? Oh, is they're not supposed to terrestrialize? They don't have a terrestrialization animation. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow we're able to overcome this great beast and take the fight home. So what? We're just hanging out or okay. <laughs> Anyway, after that battle, Nomoda gives us our very own Terra Orb, so we decide to test it out on the second grunt. Despite this guy having an Urshifu, this fight goes about the same as the last one, and we take it home easily. Finally, we're able to head up to school and get this education party started. After making some new friends, we head into the academy where we learn about our objectives for the game. In this game, there are three main storylines, which all kind of boil down to about the same thing, a whole bunch of Pokemon battles. Armed with the power of information, we make our way out into the world to start laying the smack down. But first, we need to learn how to ride our new friend Coridon. Deep down, I was hoping that this would also be randomized and that we would get to ride around on a toad school or something, but unfortunately, we're just stuck with the motorcycle with legs. Ah, we just became enamorous. Anyway, we return to our normal form, then set off on a collision course with our first objective, the Bug-type gym west of Mesagoza. But it's not one minute after we leave the safety of the city before we find something else crazy. I literally have never seen this Pokemon before. Oh my god, that's so cool. Got him. Our luck with these catches has honestly been insane. We continue our journey until, of course, we find some more crazy Pokemon. Oh, Zacian? We gotta get Zacian. Where'd it go? No! Rayquaza? Get back here. Where do you think you're going? Why is it level 25? After those delicious distractions, we finally make it into the town of Cortando, where the first gym awaits. All right. And we're stuck. Yeah, let's not forget, it's not just the randomizer that's responsible for the jank in this game. Eventually, we find our way out of this prickly predicament and Olive roll our way through the gym challenge to unlock the ability to face off against the gym leader, Katie. Now, normally, Katie specializes in bug types, but this time around, it seems she's changed up her strategy a bit. Her lead, Dragonair, does some big damage to Maridon, but we're able to barely take it out. Then her Rufflet doesn't really stand too much of a chance. After defeating the bird, we find out the real reason why Katie is the gym leaders. Why that do no damage? No, Chester! Smash. 
Why is it got Rock Smash? No! Yeah, we got swept in the first gym, okay? I don't want to talk about that. In our next battle, we come correct. We fight through our Pokemon until Magearna rears its ugly head. But this time around, we hit it with a mean glare from Chester, paralyzing it and allowing us to go absolutely nuts with Accupressure. We max out a bunch of different stats, then steamroll the rest of Katie's squad. Um, nom, nom. With the first gym complete, we start heading out of town towards our next objective, the first Titan Pokemon. And we're stuck. We work our way out of that sticky situation, then we somehow manage to avoid getting randomly stuck as we make our way to the canyons east of Mesagoza. Here we find and catch an iron bundle. Terrible nature. Terrible moves. Doesn't have an attack. Which turns out to be pretty underwhelming. Luckily, we bounce back and manage to snag a Skeledurge with some actual moves. Then, just as we're approaching the Titan's lair, we pass up the opportunity to catch a Dragapult, instead deciding to chase down an even more impressive creature. Ah! Look at it run! It's hilarious! <laughs> no, not that one! The other one! No! After that battle, we chase it down, but unfortunately, it gets poisoned by Greninja's ability Poison Point, and last one. Getting the ball. Dang it, man! After recovering from that tragic loss, we engage the Great Crab Titan Cloth in battle and dispatch it with ease. But before we can land our killing blow, the beast makes a break for it. Stance, big boy. Hopping that ass, literally. We team up with Arvin to defeat Mr. Pinchers, then head into its cave to gather the precious Herba Mystica that it was guarding. After defeating the Titan, we find our way to the home of the second gym, Artisan. But before we can take on the gym leader, we have to complete another gym challenge, which has us rounding up some rogue flowers by force. Look at this, this matchup is hilarious. This like giant god versus a tiny flower. After peacefully returning the flowers to safety, we headed to face off against the gym leader, Brassius. This fight goes pretty well. We're able to roll through the majority of his team, then take out his roaring Dragapult with basically our entire squad. Oh, it's roaring again? Okay. Why is it just randomly roaring? Kilge? Maybe? Nice. Finally, we face off against his ace, Ravskill, with our Enamorous, who just recently learned its first attacking move, Crush Claw. We're able to Crush Claw this big bug down and claim our second gym badge. After beating the gym, the next stop on our adventure is the lair of the second Titan Pokemon on the other side of the map. We travel to Cortando, then begin climbing to the Titan's lair. Oh, there's a cave over here? What? Oh! I love this thing. I love Heatran. I couldn't remember its name, though. We catch this hot boy, then it's not another minute before we find something else interesting. Oh. Zamazenta? Jengar? Ooh. Darude Sandstorm. Celebrate? Woo! Congratulations, Randy! Thanks! <laughs> Eventually, we regain focus on our mission and climb up the treacherous cliffs up to battle the Titan Bomber Deer. We quickly dispatch this overgrown avian, grab its Herba Mystica, and head on our way. Eventually, we reach our next destination, the First Team Star Base. We easily steamroll the guard out front, then head into our First Team Star Challenge. What are you doing back there? Can you not follow me? Okay, they're not random. It's just going to stand there. Okay. Well, I guess we can't use this. Oh no, we can. It just has to stand still to fight. It can't move. After a while, we dispatch enough random Pokemon in the field to summon the leader of the camp, Giacomo. We have a back and forth battle until Giacomo sends in the big guns. Is that a shiny? Oh, cool. Shiny Diancie! We're able to just barely take out this terrestrialized Diancie, which is his sixth Pokemon. But for some reason, the battle doesn't end there. After we defeat an entire team of six Pokemon, including a terrestrialized mythical beast, Giacomo sends in his biggest threat of them all, his oversized Dark-type Revivroom. We do all we can to defeat this Turbo Diesel monstrosity, but the damage we took against his ace Diancie was just too great to overcome. It's gonna take a lot more than that to put me down for good. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. Giacomo doesn't seem like a very good trainer. 
big acupressure time. We should not have set up against this. Okay. All right, we're for, we're through two of seven. Oh yeah. Very nice. And now we got Rev of Room. Not much, not much damage there. But we keep, you know, we keep on keeping on. Now that's how it's done. With the dark type team star dispatched, we chart a course towards the bright lights in the big city that is Lavincia. What a ah! Eventually, we're able to avoid the aggressive locals and navigate this treacherous world to arrive at our destination. We head into the gym building to begin our challenge, then... Oh. Oh, Nimona, I forgot about you. Okay, thank goodness. Spangoon crash stomp. After we defeat her, we're able to begin the gym challenge. Normally this gym is nothing to worry about, just a couple rounds of hide and seek with the director with a couple easy battles sprinkled in. But for some reason, the randomizer decided to feed the trainers in this gym the turbo juice and make them into absolute monsters. We barely squeak out a victory against the first trainer, then head into the second battle where we realize that we don't get a chance to heal in between these fights. So our team is in sorry shape as we face off against another six super strong random Pokemon. Regardless we use our expert battling abilities to defeat the Pokemaniac's first five Pokemon, but at this point, our Maridon is down to just two HP going in against his ace. Maybe no attacking moves? You're shocked. No! We hold that L, then watch in awe as the director chooses the exact same spots to hide as we attempt the gym challenge yet again. Thankfully, this time around, we only have to fight the second trainer. With our team of super powerful legendaries at full health, he's really no match. So we're able to complete the challenge and earn the right to face off against the gym leader, Iona. Her first four Pokemon are all trashed here, so they go down without much trouble. It's not until she brings in her fifth Pokemon, Alolan Muck, that our problems really start. Wow, that did no damage at all. Ow! This muck looks especially frightening. Ow. We may have defeated the Rainbow Sludge Monster, but we're not out of the woods yet. Oh, Canyon. Oh, that's bad. Thankfully, we have a good matchup against this literal Digimon, and Greninja's able to clutch it out with a couple sludge waves. Now that we've completed the third gym, we decide to head into the high desert above the city and take on the next Titan, Earthworm. Along the way, we discover something that I can only describe as magical. Hold the phone. I need to find out something. No! This is the worst day of my life. The worst day of your life so far. We take some time to recover from this tragic incident, then direct our rage towards the Titan Earthworm. We defeat it in the first round easily, but suddenly it makes a break for it. We begin to chase this sandworm wannabe through the desert, but quickly find ourselves distracted. You know, you would think that they would make the walls in this game so you couldn't see through them. Oh, there he is. Found him. Back on track, we team up with Arvin and defeat this wiggly worm, then head over to the oasis city of Kaskarafa to take on the next gym. Unfortunately, right as we arrive, the gym leader takes off headed for an auction that's taking place across the biggest desert in the region. And to make matters worse, he forgot his wallet. Begrudgingly, we accept the challenge of doing this lady's job and begin to make our way across this great pit of sand to deliver Kofu's billfold. This is a bit of a hike, which means that along the way, we find quite a few interesting things. Come here, boy. Oh, there's a lot of them. All right, get in the ball. Three? Yes. This is maybe the worst environment for the God of Snow, but you know, here we are. It's not just Articuno that we find out here. Is that Meloetta? You're mine. Holy origin pulse. We narrowly catch this thing, then something even stranger happens. 
very interesting transformation. Oh yeah, evolutions are random too. We take a quick look at this thing's moveset, then decide to do something a little bit crazy. Instead of delivering the wallet to the gym leader Kofu like a good boy, we decide to break the sequence of the game and attempt to defeat the great tusk titan in the desert. All right, big guy. Thanks for coming over. This is a big deal because it means that we're fighting this thing at a 20 level disadvantage. Break, break. Ah! Game time, baby. 20% chance to get this W. Live? The losses pile up until our strategy finally works. Before the battle, we gave Lester the Quick Claw, which has a 20% chance to allow our Pokemon to go first, regardless of speed. In this attempt, we get the proc we need and land the move Toxic. This is an attack that badly poisons the opponent, meaning that at the end of every turn, it takes an incremental amount of poison damage. With the Toxic Poison ticking, it's not too long until we literally kill this thing. Great Tusk fainted. Wait, did we just get around having to do the second phase? But somehow with its health fully depleted, it's still able to run off. After we chase it down, Arvin jumps in to help, so the second phase goes way quicker than the first, and we fell the great beast. That means that on a random whim, we've managed to check another objective off of our to-do list. After dispatching the Titan, we find our way to the auction to deliver Kofu's wallet. For some reason, his overzealous aid won't let us hand it over, so we're forced to give him and his Thunderous a good old smackdown. After the battle, we deliver for the wallet, win the auction, then double back to Kaskarafa to face the gym leader. He may look silly, but Kofu comes out hot. Oh my god! That's in this game? Blah! What is happening? <laughs> Bye! That kills me, yeah, for sure. Okay, well, I guess one for one, I, I don't know. Even with an Urshifu, the rest of Kofu's team isn't too threatening, so we're able to win the fight without too much trouble. After the battle, we head over to the Tag Tree Thicket to our next stop on our journey, the Poison Team Starbase, where we battled this kid out front who just won't let us in for some reason. His team is broadly pretty harmless, except for his Clawitzer, who just would not stop going for dragon dances. God, why is it doing us so dirty right now? It's going Max Dragon Dance. Raging Bull, what move is that? Oh, well, okay, it's normal type, okay. Well, I guess that goes to show that not even the best setup moves can make a Pokemon not suck. Anyway, with this kid out of the way, we head into the base, commit a mass murder on every Pokemon in sight, then battle the base's leader, Don Atticus. His first two Pokemon fall to the might of our Meloetta, but thanks to a nasty mirror coat from his pink Kirchen, we're forced to swap to Smelladurge as he brings in his Cacnea. We take this baby cactus out, then using the combined might of Skeledurge, Baridon, and Greninja, we're just barely able to defeat his Volcarona. Finally, we take out his terrestrializing Tinkatuff and he brings in his Revivroom. This is the point where we finally realize the true power of Meloetta. Don't get crit. <sighs> Clutch. Completely, totally knew it was going to work out like that. Oh, did I crit? Oh, no, it just killed. Yeah, got him. That went pretty well, but those last two battles definitely felt a little bit harder than they usually do. That's for good reason, because it seems that in our rush to beat the game, somehow we skipped over the second team star base. Overleveled and frankly overpowered, we head over to the base and crush every single living being inside. <laughs> what? <laughs> that face is horrifying. With Mela defeated, order is restored, and we continue down the correct path through the game. We head on our way to the town of Madali, where the next gym awaits. As you might expect, we find some strange stuff along the way. Where are you going? <laughs> it looks even worse in this game. How did they manage that? Let's see what type Salamence is. They really don't want to mess with me, huh? Hello? Hello? 
we put aside the janky physics and ghosts of Pokemon past as we arrive in Medali. We head right into the gym and somehow manage to beat the gym challenge first try, guessing the secret menu item with zero prior knowledge. Enraged that his challenge was defeated so easily, Larry hops into the spontaneously appearing battlefield and demands that we face him. We hyper voice down his lead Krakorok, then he sends in Fortress. Round one. Fight! You know, I'm starting to think that Hoopa might not be very good. Good thing we have Bellowetta to come in and pick up the slack. It cleans up Larry's next three Pokemon with a few Earth Powers until Larry brings in his Diancie. We swap to Articuno, then force it to Baton Pass. Bye! Cresselia. Oh my god. Larry, dude, what is up with this? Luckily, Cresselia doesn't have too much going on in terms of offenses, so we swap around until we're able to take it out. Then, after another baton pass from Diancie, Larry summons a huge crowd as he terastalizes his Ace Greninja. It annihilates our Articuno with a super effective lash out, but as usual, Magnet comes in and nonchalantly destroys it with the Barb Barrage. Finally, we pin down his elusive Diancie and finish it off to clean up the fight. Oh, hungry bears. Just as quickly as we arrived, we begin to make our way out of Medali one gym badge richer. But on the way out, we of course are stopped by our rival Nimona, who won't let us leave without a fight. We send out Hoopa against her Frostlass, why does everything have a fighting type move? Bouncing back from that, we terrestrialize Meloetta, then systematically delete each of her remaining team members. All the while, Nimona just keeps bringing in her Gengar, only to baton pass it out on the following turn. I'm not joking, this thing literally baton passed five times in this battle. Why? Anyway, eventually we get her down to just her Ace Go villain. I like how only one head is wearing it though, that is funny. I do wish that they would give the Pokemon with multiple heads a hat for each of them, it doesn't really seem all that fair. Anyway, we win this battle, then begin our journey up to the town of Montanavera to take on the next gym. <laughs> Just a dad and his children. Before we take on the next gym, we add a Rayquaza to the crew. Yes? Yes! Then we decide to train up our team a bit. The best Pokemon to train on in the immediate area just so happens to be Cinderace. I hadn't spent that much time with this Pokemon before, so I had no idea what it had in store for me. Five thousand bone-chilling screams later, we feel like we're in a good place to take on the next gym. We head up to Montanavera, then begin the gym challenge, which has us warming up the crowd for the main act with a few exciting Pokemon battles. Our first opponent is <laughs> this kid. <laughs> yeah, very funny. Where's my real opponent? The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go. Uh, all right, let's try that again, shall we? This time around, we discover the true power of spread moves that hit both enemies in a double battle. Moves like Origin Pulse from Meloetta and Parabolic Charge from Maridon. We leverage that power to defeat our greatest rival. All through the town. Despite our next opponent having a Landorus, Chi Yu, King Gambit, and Maridon, we're able to claw our way through this battle and challenge the gym leader, Rhyme. Against the MC of RIP, we terrestrialize turn one, which gets the crowd going so much that they lend us their energy and give our Pokemon a boost to every single one of their stats. We're able to use this boost to snowball with Origin Pulse from Meloetta and swiftly defeat Rhyme's shiny Scizor and friends. That victory secures our sixth gym badge. From here, we head across Paldea up to the town of Alfernada to take on the Psychic Gym. We enter the building and try to start the challenge. Oh, oh, there's a Nimona fight. This time around, Demona's team is pretty strong. We trade haymakers back and forth, exchanging one Pokemon for another and battling through our very own Steed Coridon. We defeat her Skuntank and Mudsdale, then with half of our team dead and the other half on life support, we land the final blow against her Iron Moth. We've won the battle, but at what cost? After seeing all the death and destruction caused by our own insatiable desire for victory, we decide that we should probably get some professional help. Luckily, the next gym challenge is literally emotional therapy. 
Why is he standing so far away from me? Does he just not like me, really? Oh, he's so terrifying. Between the rounds of Simon Says, we have a couple battles. The first battle against another literal child goes just fine. The only thing is, it leaves our team pretty low on the old HP, meaning that we stand pretty much no chance in our second battle against this old guy. Discharge, we live this. Yes. Clot. The best part about losing in this gym is that you get to do more of this. Woo. Anyway, after we have our fun, we wipe this old homie off the map and head in to face the gym leader Tula. I don't know if you can tell, but the last five or so battles have been pretty rough. Thankfully, the game decides to cut us some slack in our battle against Tula. We slice through her team like a hot knife through butter until she brings in her last Pokemon, Quagsire, who comes in and terastalizes. Metronome, uh-oh. Yeah, I guess the game had to get in one last F you before it could let us win. Anyway, we get the W and snap the pick, then move on back up to the top of Glaciado Mountain towards the final gym. Along the way, we find a Giratina and, oh, Calrix too? We of course snag both of those. What are these moves? It just has all the most strong moves in the game. Finally, we make our way over to the ice gym, slide through the gym challenge, then head into battle. Everything goes according to plan. We take out the leader Grusha's first three team members, then he flips the table on us. Oh, imposter? Oh, uh-oh. What? <gasps> We come so close to losing the battle to our own Meloetta, but thankfully Magnet finishes it off and clutches it out against his Ace King Gambit. After the gym, we make a quick trip over to this big bay, which is home to the final Titan, Dondozo. We head out to its home island in the middle of the water. What is that, a Mimikyu that's horrifying? From the depths of the sea making sure to avoid any spooky spirits from the deep, we summon the great fish. After forcing it out of hiding, we team up with Arvin and make quick work of this big mouth boy. But after killing such a beautiful creature, I end up back in that dark place. I start to wonder, what is this all for? Why am I participating in this violence, enslaving Pokemon, making them battle their brothers? For what? I need some time to clear my head. We take some time away from our challenge and cruise the skies and meditate on our transgressions. Then we have a crazy idea. You know all those legendaries that we've been seeing everywhere? Well, what if we shiny hunted for one of those guys? Would be pretty cool to have a shiny legendary on the team. With our goal set, we get to work seeking out our new shiny. In this game, there are constantly mass outbreaks of Pokemon across the world, which are random and change every day. Not only do these outbreaks cause a ton of the same Pokemon to spawn in a small area, but if you you defeat 60 of the 100 Pokemon that spawn there, the rest of the outbreak will have drastically boosted odds of being shiny. With that in mind, we start searching the world for a mass outbreak of something good. Eventually, we find this field that is absolutely overflowing with the primal god of land itself, Groudon. This is exactly what we were looking for. We get to work killing 60 of these godly creatures to increase our shiny odds. One, two, three, four, five. I know that I was talking about being the disturbed by all the violence just a minute or two ago, but I mean, it's, it's a shiny Groudon. Come on. After the dirty work is done, we begin the painstaking process of entering and exiting a picnic from the menu in order to reset the spawns in the area. Every time we exit the picnic, there's a set of brand new Groudon, each having a chance to be shiny. We do this for literally five minutes until... Oh, no, no, that was a shiny right there. I was literally... Yep, you saw that right. We missed the shiny. I try to collect myself and pick back up where I left off, but the pain of missing a shiny is just too much to handle. We end up returning to our journey empty handed. At this point in the game, we have all eight gym badges and have defeated all five Titans. So that means that all we have left to do is take on the last two team star leaders. We get back on track and head over to the base of Ortega, the first of the two remaining bosses. Before we head in, we catch a Cresselio with an absolutely insane move. Move set. Bruce Strength Sap. Got the annoying 
upset, huh? Then we head into the gates and lag our way through the mass murder of more innocent Pokemon until we do battle with the leader Ortega. In this battle, our Cresselia really shows what it's made of, taking out half of Ortega's squad single-handedly. Then we bring in Articuno and take out his silly hat-wearing Gengar. Finally, we swap to Magnet to finish out the fight against his big ol' Revivroom. After defeating the Little Lord, we head over to the final team star layer. But before we go inside, we catch one of the many wild Mewtwo from the area. All right, let's see what this bad boy can do, shall we? We head over to the base and face off against the guard out front. It seems that this grunt's Gallade only knows one move and it doesn't do damage. A perfect time for us to max out our attack and speed with Dragon Dance. We dance our way to max attack, smack the living crap out of its Gallade, then steamroll. <laughs> What? We finish out the rest of this fight normally, then head back to the Pokemon Center to heal up. This is when we have the luckiest moment of our entire playthrough. Oh. Shiny. This completely makes up for us missing that Groudon earlier. The shiny gods have had mercy on our poor soul. With Thicky 2 on the team, our victory is all but assured. We wipe out the Pokemon population of a small city as we head through Ares' base to battle the final boss. We kick off the battle by giving the old Mewtwo setup strat another go, but this time, it's shiny. Our discolored majesty enables us to take out her first three Pokemon before falling to her Skeledurge. Next, we bring in our tanky Cresselia, who gets her down to just her ace Gengar, who then falls easily to Horse Boy. Finally, her Revivroom comes in and does manage to give us a little bit of trouble simply due to the fact that it's an absolute tanky beast. But in the end, the might of our legendary squad wins out. Now that we've finished the final team star battle, we have officially entered the end game. At the end of each of the three storylines, there are three final boss battles. We head up to the Elite Four building to finish off the gym storyline. As we're approaching, we find a Chien Pao, which I have literally never seen in game before, so we of course have to catch it. Once that's taken care of, we make our way into the building to take on part one of the champion assessment. We scrape our way through the written portion, which allows us to proceed to part two of the exam, the battle assessment. Against our first opponent, Rika, we try to set up some dragon dances with our newest team member, Chim Pao. Oh, not even close. This attempt is completely unsuccessful. Luckily, Rayquaza takes this thing out with a couple behemoth blades, then Horse Boy takes out his cloister. Next, we send in Mewtwo against his Corviknight and get to use the move Revival Blessing for the first time ever, which brings Chien Pao back from the grave. This is all fine and dandy, but we do lose our sweet Mewtwo to a close combat on the very same turn. We finish this bird off with Raymond the Rayquaza only to lose it to Rika's next Pokemon, Luxray. From here, we bring in Horse Boy, who's able to fight through Luxray Urshifu and his ace Mewtwo. Unfortunately, along the way, Rika's Mewtwo was able to revive his Corviknight. I'll kill him again, don't worry. After the battle, we go into our bag to heal up our team, only to realize that we made a critical error. We forgot to buy any extra healing items. We only have a couple revives and a few potions, which means that every fainted Pokemon or little piece of damage really matters as we fight our way through this gauntlet of trainers. With that in mind, we head into our battle against the next trainer, Poppy. We defeat her lead Persian easily, then have an absolutely epic battle against her next Pokemon, Hariyama. That hit neutral? Jiminy Krimis. With that beast out of the way, we fight through her next three team members until she brings in her Mewtwo. Eventually, the second Mew falls to its own Paris song, then we go right back to fighting Hariyama. Finally, after that epic bout, she sends in her ace, Oink alone. Steel Beam misses. Beautiful. Wait, what? What? Well, at least it killed itself, I guess. That is certainly not the kind of fight you want to have right after you realize that you're low on healing items. Luckily, our next opponent, Larry, cuts us some slack with an extremely weak squad, capped off by two back-to-back -back chestnuts. But somehow, we do still manage to lose Rayquaza and Mewtwo in this battle. Out of revives and searching for answers, we discover that in this game, you can actually access your box during the Elite Four, which is pretty clutch. We swap out our two dead friends for a couple more lively ones. With the team all healthy-ish, we duke it out against the final member of the Elite Four, Hassel. His Talonflame sacrifices itself to take out our Meloetta, which is a rough start. Next is Glalie and Volcanion do give us some... <laughs> 
asshole. Taking out our Chimpao, our Horse Boy, and leaving Maridon super low on HP. Oh yeah, and they also poison our Cresselia, but you know, other than that, his team is pretty tame. We finish off his Crocodile and his Ace Bonnet, then check out our party for the damages while we start to think about what potential Pokemon we can dig out of our box. But much to my surprise, after the fight, we end up getting a full heal on our entire party, which is much appreciated as the Champion Gita awaits us for our final showdown on top of the building. I don't know what it is with these randomizers, but they always end up doing my girl Gita real dirty. I think the best way I can sum up how much her team sucked is by telling you that her ace was an Aloma Mole, objectively the worst Pokemon ever. Aloma stupid aside, we get a big W against Gita and officially achieve the champion rank. As we're exiting the Elite Four building, we of course are ambushed by Nimona, who just can't help but interrupt our special moment. She challenges us to one final showdown in the center of Mesagoza for all the marbles. But before we go and do that, first we decide to wrap up this nasty Team Star business. We head up to the front of the school where we find the entrance blocked by the director. For some reason, he won't let us in without a fight, so we have no choice but to battle. Our Giratina and Rayquaza take out his Rabska, Alolan, Dugtrio, and Leafeon before he sends out his Ferrigerath. We smack this thing around with a super effective Burning Jealousy, then he sends in a Zamazenta who goes down to a couple more Burning Jealousies. Finally, he's down to just his Ace Basket Legion, who comes in, terastalizes, then just kinda dies. After defeating the director, we're finally able to enter the school. We head to the schoolyard where the big boss of Team Star told us they'd be waiting. We wait until nightfall, then finally we get the big reveal. Oh, who could this hooded figure with the Eevee backpacking glasses be? <gasps> Penny, it was you the whole time. What? No way. This is my fifth time playing through this game and I still can't believe it. After the big reveal, we of course have to battle. Penny came into this battle looking to break a record. And that record is having the weakest team of any trainer so far. After thoroughly dicing Penny's Pokemon and mashing through 30 minutes of dialogue, we head over to the lab of the region's Pokemon professor, Professor Sada. Here we meet up with Arvin, who also happens to be Sada's son. We head into her lab where we receive a transmission from the professor, who tells us she's currently trapped in the crater in the center of Paldea. And you guessed it, we're the only ones who can save her. So we grab the Scarlet Book and head on our way. But surprisingly, after all of that, Arvin still wants to battle before going to save his own mom. With Arvin defeated, we just have one last thing left to do before we can save the professor. That thing is a big grand final battle with Nimona in the center of town. Time for our greatest battle to start. Oh, rolled. Ouch. Got him. Now that we've finished up all that battling business, it's finally time to save the professor. We assemble a team of the three most powerful 14 year olds we know, then dive deep into the most dangerous region in all of Paldea. What could possibly go wrong? We work our way through the crater, visiting each of the four research stations scattered throughout the landscape as we slowly deactivate the lock that's holding the professor prisoner. There are a few battles that happen as we make our way through, but unfortunately they weren't randomized. Anyway, we work our way deep into the bottom of the crater until we reach the professor chamber. We unlock the door, defeat the paradox Pokemon that were holed up inside, then head in to save the professor. Inside, we learned that this isn't actually the professor. The real professor is dead. This is just an AI that looks like the professor. What's worse is we're exploring the lab, we accidentally touch a button in this big weird mirror chamber, and the robot goes absolutely ballistic, challenging us to a battle. Little does she know, we're actually a bit of a Pokemon battling expert. You and me, girl. I like how they just drop the Pokeball into battle. Final Gambit? That's just its remaining HP. Yeah, that's fine. Nice. Nice final Gambit. Mm. It's got Brine. Oh, wait. Wow, that hit way harder than I expected it to. Yeah, you dead, kid. Some sort of error. What's the last Pokemon? After that battle, she goes even crazier, sending out her ultimate weapon. Oh, it is, it is random. <laughs> and it's a belly bolt. 
Incredibly, we're able to overcome the might of six belly bolts and survive our first randomized run of Pokemon Scarlet. Like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it. Till next time.